this is what it looks like when you really don't want to have any more conversations with your uh, with your backup. Um, long story short, went through, rebuilt transmission on the backhoe, um, did a lot of work to it as far as other things, um, fired up, and the thing is just awesome, just magnificent best backhoe in the world okay so get it fired up everything's running feeling pretty good about it uh that is a gong of grease right there um everything's running really well feeling like you know getting ready to grab this sucker go out and pull victory lap around the yard actually <laughs> actually this is like five o'clock in the evening and I'm already envisioning myself in the front yard pulling this magnolia tree stump up that that really just don't freaking like. And uh, what happens? Well, two hoses blow. You got two hoses under here that have blown. One of them is the return hose that comes from the radiator back in the transmission it's got a pinhole leak but it's shooting hydraulic fluid all the way up under the fuel tank all the way to the other side of the backhoe and the other one is power steering hose so um, that's what it looks like when <laughs> you and your backhoe aren't on speaking terms because let me tell you that is a hot tire it's like 90 degrees out here and that tire I think it warmed your butt up um, you know, I, I put weeks worth of work into this thing trying to get it going. And then it just blows two hoses on me after, you know, just short of the finish line. So, and it's a thing. It's an old backhoe. I didn't, I didn't put new hoses on it. I reused the old hoses. You know, I know it's something that happens. It was just, you know, hey, something that happens. So, what do we have to do? Well, um... We're going to have to come over here. We're going to have to remove this air breather assembly again. Empty all the fuel out of the tank. Take the fuel tank back out. Get up under here. Unscrew the one return line for the transmission. And unscrew it over here on this side. Up here by the steering assembly. Unscrew that line. And that one comes down, I think, to the back of the power steering pump. And... Because those are metal lines, metal and rubber, um, they come from the factory pressed. They have a, a machine that presses the metal coupling on top of the line, blah, blah, whatever. It is what it is. But, you know, I can go have new metal lines made for it, um, and it's not terrible, terrible expensive. But I'm not doing that. What I am going to do is, there's a local fella here in town, I'll take them lines off and I'll run over here to the ag place and get some fittings and he's going to braze the fittings onto the metal parts for me and then I'll just buy a couple pieces of hose uh, with the fitting uh, kits on there and uh, put those in place of the rubber that's busted. So it's, a, it's, not a, it's not a tremendously cheaper alternative then going and uh, having your lines remade because um, we have a shop that a guy I know down here who does that and he gives us a really good price on that kind of stuff so again it's not a tremendous savings but it is a savings in that the next time one of these hoses blow which God forbid I, you know, I hope I'm past this thing on by the time that happens but it will be far less work to fix it for the next guy. And he won't have to go out and look for a specialized shop that can do that kind of work. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so no videos today about us taking a victory lap in tobacco or you know anything like that. We evidently have to take a few things apart and try to fix some, some other stuff. And she's an old girl. I mean, she's a pretty girl. And uh, she's mine. And I love her. But... <laughs> she made me mad. I, uh, 
I wasn't exactly feeling like having a conversation with her over the last couple of weeks. So, uh, just everything's been so busy, and and you've probably seen some of the other videos I put out on painting fences and pruning trees and all this other stuff. You know, even though I'm a fixer and I like to work on my backhoe and get stuff like that done, I'm just like everybody else. I have a whole other life worth of chores to get done and things that need to be done, and and uh, you know the backhoe is not exactly priority number one as far as getting other things done around here at this moment so we'll get it done and uh, hopefully in short order I got to work on that today um, if you guys pay attention to any of the prayers I do on Tuesday night you'll know I have a friend who uh, had his foot amputated from diabetes and I have to fix a carburetor on his lawnmower tonight and uh, so his son can use it to cut yards so the man still has an income coming in while he's in rehab and you know it's Stuff like that just to me is more important than ripping a fuel tank you know, out of a backhoe and, and you know fixing some lines because ultimately those woods are going to stay until I get to them and you know it is what it is. Anyways, just want to let you guys know if you guys work on a project and you get everything done on it and then the next thing breaks, it's not just you, it's everybody. We all run into those issues and I tend to, if I'm not happy with a piece of equipment or something, I tend to walk away from it for a little bit. Um, just because I don't like to work angry and you know I wasn't angry at the fence when I painted it and I wasn't angry at the bushes when I trimmed them so you know is what it is anyways from uh, my Tabor City home to you let's fix something let's build something let's do something with our hands America's not a disposable nation and uh, you know if you got an old girl that you're working on Maybe she doesn't want to dance at the time. Give her a few minutes to soak her feet. Maybe she'll want to dance in a few hours. All right? Anyway, God bless.